Okay guys, before we get into the video, um, I realized that I didn't explain at all what we're doing. So what we're doing here with the vaulted ceiling is we have to get something up to hold up the insulation so that we can get it insulated and everything. So what we decided to do is we're going to do all of our vapor barrier and all of our plywood and our insulation all at the same time. And then just work away from the outside up to the center. Major pain. Um, one of the issues of being in a vaulted ceiling that's that tall, but it'll be totally worth it. All right, today we are doing vaulted ceiling on our sketchy platforms. We are doing vapor barrier, 3 8 plywood, then insulation on top, two layers of what is this, R28? We're putting yeah. Up? yeah, two R28 layers of R28, Roxol. Can't do blow in because it would slide down. So we're doing this, then we'll do some blow in on top. But it's, uh, we're getting there. It's a long ways down. And then I'll do the rest of the insulation from up top. Because as you can see, you can get to the top, but you can't get to the outside edges because it's only like whatever two feet heel height over there. So you can't crawl up there. But that's the adventure for the day. Set up a cut station probably in that bedroom. And Tegan is over there doing more poly. We've got Damon. We got Billy somewhere helping. Boss man. Wayne's coming later today. Just hammering it out. Getting her done. So this is gonna get acoustical all in here. And then our, because uh, that's going to be our outside wall. And then over there we can go poly to poly and that'll be good. Acoustical the walls when we do it. But this will give us something solid to nail all of our pine into. So that way if you have a board that doesn't want to behave, you can just force it wherever and put nails anywhere you need. Rather than trying to do pine on two foot center, which is damn near impossible. But Damon just says, damn, the guy behind the camera is sexy. Mm. Rotate me. I feel like I'm king of the castle. Okay. Tokyo drift inside the house. Okay. Right now, we just stuffed everything in. Then we're going to crawl out. We'll finish our poly and our plywood. Then we'll be able to crawl back in over the bedroom into here to finish up with the insulation. And the plan is we'll work from the far end, back, put in some pieces, blow in insulation, put in some pieces, blow in and seal everything up as we go. Lots of pain and suffering, but it'll be warm. Hopefully it'll be warm. Oh yeah, it's already warm. Already hot up here. And it's not because of our heads either, or our bodies. Probably our bodies. All right, so this is what we got done yesterday. I didn't have a chance to video a lot because we had a lot of people helping and we were trying to keep things rolling. So what we're doing is where we are located, we are not allowed to do blow-in insulation on a vaulted ceiling because it can slide to the outside edges and we'll have too much at the sides and none in the middle. So we have to do bat insulation. So we chose to go with uh, two layers of Roxol R28, which is that rock wool stuff. So it's kind of that green stuff you see up there. So that is um, water resistant and fire resistant, which would be good for the fireplace and you know any openings we have for venting and whatnot up there. What I do want to do though, is I do want to put in some blow-in insulation on top of the bath, just to try and seal around all the gaps from the trussing and whatnot. But to do that, we have to come from, so, that door over there is our access into the attic. So we're gonna have to run the hose for the blow in over top all those rooms, then come through that little hole up there, walk across here, which is why we're gonna leave the insulation and then you can blow. We will put down, you know, some bats wherever we can. We'll blow back and forth and then we'll move back and then we'll blow back and we'll just do it in one process. And we'll be, you know, doubling down on the insulation. It'll be, not going to slide off because we have the bats there 
but it's also going to seal it better around, you know, your gaps and holes from all the framework up there. And then we're probably going to move into the crawl space and we'll work on uh, cutting and stuffing more insulation down there. So we've got another big crew guys coming today and girls, we've got both. And uh, hopefully we can get a bunch of stuff done. We're on Christmas holidays right now, so rush is on. Get as much done as we can while we have some time. Still haven't heard anything from the HVAC guy. He was supposed to be done by Christmas at the latest, and he hasn't even started, so that sucks. And then our solar. So the panels are still bending. It's all arced right now. They have to add in a bunch more supports. I haven't heard from them either. Not sure when they're coming. Not sure if they're doing Christmas holidays or what, but I'm at the mercy of when people show up. I mean, we're doing everything we can as fast as we can, like I always do. And then we're stuck waiting for people, but I'd rather be stuck waiting for people than waiting on myself because then there's nothing I can do about it if it's someone else. But I feel bad if someone has to wait for me. So I hammer down and I get it done. Our next problem our whole chimney was installed wrong. So our box that's up in here to hold the insulation back is supposed to be down here. So we can attach our poly to it and it's an insulated barrier and then you can seal it. But it's all up in there. So now I gotta tear everything apart, slide it down and reinstall. That's it? Everything hurts, and we're dying. <laughs> we'll just keep stuffing everything we can in here, and it'll be another day's problem. This is the last four. Okay. Damon, take two. <laughs> just goes to sleep instantly. <laughs> Half a day, got the chimney moved down, so now we could seal it to it. We gotta get high temp for here, cause that never got sealed before. But all the poly's done. Now plywood, and we'll have work for you guys to do. <laughs> and cut for us. Home stretch, hardest though, because we got tons of stuff to go around. We're almost done. Cut around the boxes. Left a strip down the middle. Don't care. That'll all get covered by pine. They're getting everything set up. Cut the last two. And then we got weird little ones. So this was Tegan, her dad, and her brother today. They, they were like insulating machines. So they did the entire crawl space in like arguably less than a day. What did you have? You have someone cutting and then two of you guys putting it in or everyone was yeah. cutting? Yeah, doing it himself. You and Dawson were... Yeah, yeah, and we have like tons of extra because when uh, when Tegan was figuring out how much we needed It's virtually impossible to actually know Because you have so many staircases with heights changing So I think we have like what 13 bags or something extra yeah, and so we went with so this is two by eight walls So it's uh, r28 rock saw or rock wool or whatever we went with the rock saw because then that way if we do have moisture problems it won't rot out, it won't get wet, it's fire resistant, it's 
you know all of our utilities and stuff are going to get drilled through here still so most places you're going to have possibilities for leakages you know water damage and whatnot it'll be down in here next thing will be getting vapor barrier upstairs done that'll be just the two of us now hey tegan it was nice we had two days where we got uh what do we have like six or seven of us which is great because then we got that whole ceiling done yeah, we did all that and then they got all this done today too. That was bonus. I thought that this would be like days to get done. But I guess just didn't mess around. Tegan just, oh, and then Tegan's sick too on top of this. She's been sick for, what have you been sick for like six since, well, since before Christmas, over Christmas. She feels like absolute crap, but that won't stop her from, you can't stop me with a hernia and you won't stop Tegan with, Feeling like she wants to curl up and die in a ball from being sick, but priorities. We prioritize the house over our lives. It's done. We have all of the vapor barrier done upstairs now. We just finished off in here. This was a nightmare because you're trying to go around a wall with a little piece. We had to add another piece in and you can see what we're doing here. So here's a spot and there's a gap where we're gonna get the guy to do spray foam. So we did acoustical on either side of it. So now we know it's sealed up to here, sealed up to here. He can cut it out, he'll spray in there and that'll be sealed. And then we're leaving the windows covered. So now when he is spraying, he's not covering our windows and then we'll cut those out after. There's a bigger one there for him to do. He might not be able to get the really small ones, but he will try. We're hoping that we can get the inspector here to at least take a look at all of the vapor barrier that we've done over the course of our Christmas vacation. So then that way he can just come take a look at it and go, okay, yeah, you're okay to do your drywall in these locations, which is hopefully at least the ceiling, which there should be no issue with that. And then whatever walls that uh, we can get at, then that way they can start sheeting it. And then just another way we can try and get ahead of the game a bit because we're, we're trying to trying to gain some time here. We're so far behind, we're trying to gain a little bit of time. What we ended up deciding on, this is that spot where they didn't put the, uh, the vapor barrier over top of the top plate. So we talked to some friends of ours that do uh, insulation stuff all the time. And they said, just do the acoustical, slice off the extra. And then from the ceiling side, we'll do the same thing. We'll run acoustical. And then now you're just sealing it to the board on either side. Just don't know, we are just thinking, oh, the ceiling poly has to go to the strip on top of the wall. There is no strip on the wall. What are we going to do? But that's why it's always good to ask people because our plan was we were going to cut it to shreds and fold it around and acoustical and tape it and more pieces wrapped around it. And it would have been a huge nightmare. This, this was like 15 minutes done. So pays off to ask people who do know. So we got another late night shenanigans here. So we started downstairs here but there was a big crack in between two boards so we put some spray foam in there so we're waiting for that to cure so we jumped into easy wall for the uh, closet here got that hammered out got the master bathroom wrapped around we're doing one ginormous sheet for it. tacked up along the top there and seeing it's going to be at least a tube or more of the acoustic sealants because we have you know all of these in between where their spray foam has to go we got what three windows electrical plugs two overlaps plus to go around these but it is getting warmer in here now so now that we have we've had the fire just absolutely roaring all day got insulation in the ceiling so the whole ceiling is sealed now like we did all the poly everything completely done you could feel a difference as soon as we did it it was kind of funny the last corner up in here as we were sealing it up you could just feel the cold air blowing through and into the house since we had to open up spray foam we did a couple of these ones up here so this is basically what the guy was talking about doing so we just did it cut it out shot it in there so then this is our little uh drywall lift so i don't know if i showed that but I picked that up from Princess Auto for like, I think it was 130 bucks on sale. I was gonna hang all the drywall myself. So I figured that would be a godsend. But you can actually feel the uh, heat coming off the fire now. And yeah, I still can't believe that that was put in wrong. So you can see now if I zoom, oh, I got acoustical on my phone. So if you zoom up in there, so you can see the tape. Whoa, focus. You can see the tape around the outside. That's what we needed. Wrap up and 
head out. Be back tomorrow morning. Look at how nice the trees look today. Nearing the end of our week of getting stuff done on the house here. We came in this morning. It was warmer in here. We do have a couple spots with a little bit of frost. So we're just going to try and really watch, you know, having snowy boots and anything that has moisture as it comes in. And we need the heat to keep the acoustical sealant warm so we can keep doing that. And Tegan's tearing down a utility knife that has some right. issues with it or something oh this uh that do you loosen that off yeah yeah hmm. we are gonna try and get this whole wall done today Of it too. Cut it out. We'll cut a piece of plastic on top of it. Why? Because you spring this, so I don't have to get in there. Mm, just to keep the overspray. Yeah. Look at that. We can use the tripod as a selfie stick too. Okay, well, let's go move over to the other one then. The one that we started on with the spray foam yesterday. This is where we had to do the spray foam. They got this all framed up. They had a wicked gap so all the way along here this board is way kicked out and this board is way kicked out so at the bottom there it was like a three quarter inch gap and then it worked its way up to nothing but you could see at the bottom it was at least a half inch the whole way through you could see the screws for the tin they uh they're collecting ice on them because that that is the definition of thermal bridging so it's letting the cold through. But luckily that'll be on the outside of the insulation. Well, we lied. The next stage is we need the sealant for that. So we cut a piece of poly for here and we're gonna slap this one on. sealant we're using is this contractor solutions 
and we have found that about half of these aren't full and you can actually feel them you can just by weight hold them in your hand some of them weigh nearly double what the other ones weigh and uh, as you're using it even just when you get it started you'll start pumping it and you'll pump all the way up to here before you start getting anything out the tip and then oftentimes as you keep going there will be an air pocket because all of a sudden you'll get a shot of air and then you'll press a whole bunch more and then it keeps going so I mean I'd probably steer away from these seems to be doing the same thing as the uh, blackjack brand but all the blackjack ones that we have have been full so I don't know if this is kind of a budget brand this is just what we are sent by the uh, lumber yard there they sent us a mix some of one some of the other but I don't know the blackjack the blackjack seems to be a little nicer applying it too and it's a little thinner even when it gets cold this stuff you really have to get it hot you can actually see we melted I don't know if you can tell there we started to melt the tip of this because we were so close to the fire trying to get it hot enough We're gonna skip that one for now. I'll deal with that one later. So we're gonna move on to the kitchen. This is the final part through here. So then all we're left are the tall walls. The race is on. We're hoping to have all that done today other than the tall walls there. Can we do it, Tegan? Tegan says maybe. So we'll uh, set up the time lapse here and get rolling. We did it. So, just in the nick of time, because we got dinner we got to run to tonight. Always something, right? So Tegan's just finishing up plugs. She's got the wire there for the microwave. This here, so what we did is we put where the fume hood is gonna go, because we don't know what height it has to go at. We don't know exactly left to right where it's gonna go, but we know it's this cavity. So we put rock saw insulation, so that way where that vent is, if there's water, it'll be safer. And then we just decided to do it the same way as the spray foam guy was saying. So we just did gunk on either side, the acoustical sealant. We left the wire behind the poly too for now. We didn't pull it out because we don't know where it's going to go, whether it has to go up, down, left, right, whatever. So the idea here now is we could cut this later, right? Cut a hole in here, do what we need to do, mess around with the insulation, get whatever done and then put a patch over top of it, but at least everything else around it will be sealed. This will provide even more protection, right? Because it's just extra, 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 extra. That's kind of what we're trying to do. So last thing we have is this space here where I have to do the board and switch up insulation. And then we got the tall walls in here. Ooh, that plywood looks so nice. We should just leave it with plywood, Tegan. Why bother with doing tongue and groove pine? That's pine, right? That's same thing, kinda. So it says on our uh, phones there, it's like minus 15, minus 20 today. And it's it's cool, but if I had to guess, it's got to be plus one, plus two or something, which for anyone who works outside is a huge difference. If you're minus 20 trying to work, your hands are going numb all the time. This is, you know, we've been almost barehanded all day working and there's been no issue at all. Good morning. Just came back today. There were still coals in the fire, which was nice brought some thermometers today so we stuck one to the wall here so we are 0.4 degrees celsius 20 percent humidity and it's dropping um, right now it's like minus seven or minus eight outside and then we have a second one over here this one says plus two and eleven so we're going to see between the two of them right now just out of curiosity how, how cold it actually is in here so you got to remember we have no insulation in all the um upper ceilings up there only this is insulated but the very peak isn't but it was kind of neat yesterday when we were finishing up on this wall here 
when Tegan cut this box out, she cut it out, you could just feel wind blowing through around it in the hole. And then she taped it and now it's, you have nothing. What's the master plan today, Tegan? We should start on the small, small one. Start on that one. Tiny big piece. Just that one little part there. Well, all the way down. In the... Yeah. So you're just going to dangle off the edge off of another ladder. Yeah. And then I'll dangle off the ladder there. And we'll play a game to see who dies first. Like we said, we value this house over our lives. This is going to be a pain. This is going to be such a friggin' nightmare because all the vapor barrier, like we can do from here down, not too bad, one piece. But then like, that'll be a piece weird. That all has to go around. Like we just have to go around so much crap. But these braces, I think a lot of people don't understand what these braces are for. So they seem really heavy duty to hold something just side to side. That's not what they're doing. They're actually holding all the weight of the chimney down because the chimney is so heavy i can't remember how much each four foot section is i want to say it's got to be well over 50 pounds so if you have too much weight pushing down on the stove it'll actually start to crush the stove down so you have to put these braces in every eight feet or less and it's holding the whole chimney from just falling down into the house and usually you would have these things right against your wall, right? But since we moved this away so we could get into the second rafter, it pushed everything out. So basically we had to extend out. So that's why they're so beefy, but it's going to make it a pain to do everything. Vapor barrier and uh, all the drywalling is going to be a nightmare back there too. But the drywall behind it doesn't have to be finished because it's all getting hidden. It's just going to be finished from that line down. Tegan's looking forward to it. Lots of fun. You don't look very excited, Tegan. Show me your excited face. That's your excited face. That's the... Mitch is an idiot. Hmm. All right. So... Minus three now. What's this one say? Minus four. So yeah, we're gonna start on the tall wall here. We're just kind of fixing up insulation as we go. Getting all nice and perfect and work our way around. Right, we've had the fire going for about three hours now and we're gaining. Minus two, minus 1.3. So it is starting to warm up a bit. We're talking about maybe putting a temporary ceiling fan in there just to push some of the hot air back down circulated a bit more even here's one of the weird parts we had to do so the way that they built these walls was they built this wall first ran the plywood right across and then put the other wall against it after which just seems odd you think you'd run your plywood short run the other one up to it stud to stud and sheet it but anyway that's how they did it we added in top to bottom an extra piece which is actually kind of inside the house but we're still sealing it and then running it around that. So you have it all sealed there, sealed there. So it, this, this is technically outside the house now. Now I'm going to this taken care of because that guaranteed is where most of our heat is going right now. Because everything else is pretty much sealed. So if I can get that done, which I think I'm just going to cut this right across and this will all just be one piece. Easy peasy. ham sandwich, cheese, and we put margarine on the outside, so theoretically it'll kind of grill itself. Hot dogs, another sandwich. Lunch time. Well, the access hole works. Up top here, I'm gonna walk over. Tegan's gonna pass up the insulation that we have to lean up against that edge there. So then that'll be in place. And then uh, we'll seal that up. All right, so I got all the insulation except for where we need to access the back here. I did all of it, two layers of eight inch R28. And then 
now because that's higher than what we can blow up to now we'll do all of our blowing up to it and then i can kind of blow over it we're going to do some strapping with plastic later but well yeah this was a saving grace just a piece of plywood other than two feet so it could span across and you could sit on it or you could stand up and cut against it oh it's a lot of work i'm sweating now with a mask on which that's just the worst okay so this here is the part that I was working on that you could see. So I was trying to get it around all this, you know, whatever, the trussing and whatnot. Major pain in the butt. So some of it there, like you see, there's a little spot missed. But, <coughs> oh, insulation in the air is still killing me. But uh, I'm not too worried about, like, little spots like that. Plus, we're going to have blow-in around it, on top of it, next to it. So it's going to be super, super insulated. Um, we lost a ton of heat because we had the hatch open so it cooled right down here but it's actually i think like three or four degrees at the thermometer down there now so that is pretty dang good i think that's it for today as always thanks for watching 80 acres see you next time bye